Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 6 of the 2021 FIDE Grand Swiss. We're past the halfway mark. Round 6 will be followed by the only rest day. I will show you the standings at the end of the video, but first we're gonna play some chess. I will show you the game between Badur Jobava and Jules Moussard from the open section. Jobava opened with the e-pawn. I showed you Jobava's game against Niels Grandelius from round 4. I put a link up here to that video. Badur Jobava is from Georgia, is 37 years old and is a very popular figure in the chess world because of his enterprising play. And this game is no different. E5 from his opponent, Jules Moussard, is a 26-year-old grandmaster from France. And here Jobava plays d4, playing the center gambit in an attempt to avoid the Petrov defense. The normal move is knight f3 instead of d4, but then Jobava wanted to avoid the Petrov defense, which would come on the board after knight f6. After d4, black took on d4, and you can take with the queen, knight c6, and the queen then goes back to e3, and that is a theoretical opening. But Jabava plays it differently. After e takes d4, he played knight f3. Musa gave a check. And knight b to d2. Grandmaster Stuart Conquest said in a live broadcast that he had never seen this position before. And we're only on move 4. It shows the richness and depth of our beautiful game. That a seasoned Grandmaster has never seen a position that comes on the board after only 4 moves. Only 7 half moves. c3 is a theoretical move here. But as said, Jobava played knight b to d2 to shield the check. Musar strikes in the center. Knight takes d4. Knight got developed to e7. c3, kicking the bishop. Bishop dropped back. Knight 2 to b3, attacking that bishop. Bishop dropped back again. And bishop g5, pinning the knight on e7. Black castled. e takes d5. And here we come to a critical moment in the game after only 9 moves. The engine shows that you can play f6 here, you can play rook e8, that's all fine and the position is about equal, but in this position black took the pawn on d5. Giving up on the knight on e7, counting on the pin over the e-file to get the piece back. The knight is hanging but the rook will come to e8 and that will be a pin, so he'll get the piece back. Bishop takes e7 came and rook e8 came. But black had missed the refutation of that temporary p sacrifice. It's not an easy move to find, but Jobava found it. Knight d4 to e2 is the refutation of black taking that pawn on d5. What is the point here? Now for starters, you cannot take the piece. It's not check anymore because the knight is on e2 and the queen is hanging. So you can't do that. You might say, why don't we first swap the queens? Queen takes d1 check, rook takes d1, and then take the piece back. That doesn't work either, because black has a back rank problem. Rook d8 check, and checkmate. So after knight e2, black is in trouble. And believe it or not, there was even a bit of a way out. He could have played queen f5. White can then save his bishop on e7, and at the same time protect f2, that looks very good. But then black played knight c6, with compensation for the piece due to white's king being stuck in the middle, and it's not so easy to unpin the knight and get the white king into safety. Black has compensation for the piece. But after knight e2, Musar played queen h5. A bad move is often followed by a worse one. Queen d2, nice move from Jabava. If you now play knight c6, there is queen g5 with a forced trade of queens. Black cannot avoid it. And then white is just a piece up. When the queens are off the board, the white king can breathe a sigh of relief. Nice move, queen d2. You still cannot take the bishop because the back rank is still weak and you get checkmated. After queen d2, Musa played h6, getting that checkmate out of the position. White castled. And you can still not take that bishop, well you can. You don't get checkmated anymore, but after queen d8 check, king h7, white can choose if he wants to take the bishop on c8 or the rook on e7. After castling, black played knight c6. And the last move of the game, move 14, knight f4, attacking the queen, which has no good square. 
The white king is now safe on the queen side and white is a piece up. Musar had had enough and resigned here. Yes, the game only lasted 14 moves. That hurts and Musar will have the whole rest day, which is following round 6, to think about this. Let's now listen to a clip from Jobava being interviewed shortly after the game. I know like a player uh, how disappointed uh, to lose like that, uh, but we know that this is sport, <laughs> so it can happen, such a loses. Um, I choose this line, it's quite original, uh, to avoid this Petrov, for example, uh, and he played more or less okay uh, after opening, but then uh, he made uh, a huge blunder, I think he completely missed 92, and um, um, he could play queen f5, for example, instead of queen h5, bishop h4, and it would be still some game, but um, he just uh, collapsed in Fimbus. And before we look at the standings, I want to show you this position. It is from the bottom board in the women's section. White is a 24-year-old woman international master, Jessie February from South Africa. I showed you her game from round one in my first video on this event. I'll link it up here. Her opponent is one of the local players, 18-year-old Madara Golsta from Latvia. They played a very long and topsy-turvy game and we have arrived on move 79 after bishop g6 from white, which is Jesse February. Golsta is winning in this position. There are many ways to win with her extra exchange, but she chooses the most aesthetic one. She, she used the Zugzwang motif. Let's have a look. She played rook h8 check. You only have one move, that is bishop h5. And now the very nice rook h8 to h7, giving them move back to white. You have again only one move, king h2, and now you can sacrifice on h5. G takes h5 and g4, and here February resigned. Let's look at why she resigned. If you push the pawn, there's nothing else, then g3 is check. King h3, g2, h7, both players promote, but black is first. You can win the queen with queen h1, that wins the newborn queen, but you can do it much easier. After h8 queen, there is also checkmate on g3. A very nice way to finish off the game. It is to Jessie February's credit that she gave an interview for the live broadcast only minutes after the game had completed. Not many people would have done that. We all know the feeling of devastation after losing a game, especially in a long game where she had chances to get something out of it. We have five leaders going into the rest day in the open section. Alireza Firuja, Maxime Vachelagrave, Jevgeny Nayer, Krishnan Sasikiran and good old Alexei Shirov are leading the tournament. There are two places up for grabs in the candidates tournament in 2022. In the women's section, the players are fighting for only one spot in the candidates tournament and we have one leader, Lei Tingjie from China, followed by four players half a point behind her, Nino Basiashvili, Elizabeth Patz, Zhu Jenner and Natalia Pogonina. Round 7 will be played on Wednesday, the 3rd of November, and I will be here after the round to tell you what happens. I hope you like this video and that you'll keep following the FIDE Grand Swiss tournament with me. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you like the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.